too young to be used by God, and you're never too old to be used by God, and you're never too young for God to bless you, and you're never too old for God to bless you. You're never too old for God to make you a promise. I don't care if you're 99 right now and God makes you a promise. God's going to deliver on that promise before he takes you to heaven. It's just a simple fact. God will always deliver on his promises if you stay faithful. It's a faithful message. It's about hope. That's why I said it could be Joel Steve. Because all he does is talk about the good things of Christ. And that's a wonderful thing at times. What he doesn't tell you is about sin and that's a bad thing. Hope is a wonderful thing. Hope is a good thing. But you got to get those voices out of your head. Listen, have you ever seen one of my favorite movies, Field of Dreams? Yeah. Kevin Costner plays Ray Costello, yeah. an old baseball player turned farmer in the middle of Iowa. Mm -hmm. Ray starts hearing voices. They're not from God. It's a Hollywood movie, but Ray starts hearing voices while he's out in his cornfield. The voice keeps telling him the famous line, what is it? Build it and they will come. Build it and they will come. And Ray's confused. Ray don't know what the voice is telling him to do. All they said is build it and they will come. So what's Ray do? Ray gets it in his head that he's supposed to build a baseball field in the middle of his nowhere Iowa cornfield. And all the voices around Ray start telling him, you're crazy. You're nuts. Ray cuts down his corn drop. That's his money for the year. Ray's now broke, and he builds a baseball field in the middle of nowhere because Ray believed the voice that was inside. Ray said, if I build it, they will come. And guess what happened? At the end of that movie, all the ghosts of all these famous baseball players from past start showing up. And maybe I like the movie because I'm just a baseball fan or because I like learning about all these old baseball players that from the 20s. Or maybe I like it because I put a spiritual twist on it. Mm -hmm. And if God says it's going to happen, yeah. you better do yeah. whatever he says. Because if you build it, if you believe it, if you dream it, if you stay faithful to that promise, God's going to show up. And God's going to show up. And God's going to do what only God can do and bless you in ways that you ain't never been blessed. I know the miracles are coming. Why? Because I believe in the promises of God. I believe that He has never failed. The song said, He has never failed. That's why I trust Him. Ben didn't know what I was preaching, but I love that song. That's why I'm faithful. That's why I trust him. Because he has never failed. Because on multiple occasions I have sought the Lord. And he has never failed to answer me. It may have took longer than Brother Cluster wanted. But he showed up and he delivered. And guess what? Most of the time, he does more than what you ask for anyway. David prayed at Ziglag. The enemy came and took all his people, burned his city to the ground. David's men wanted to stone him. And David prayed because David trusted God. He said, should I pursue, will I overtake? David asked two questions. The God I serve gave him three answers. He said, pursue, thou wilt surely overtake, and thou wilt regain all. You will get everything you lost back plus some more. He didn't ask him if everything was still going to be there. God just answered him anyway. That's the God you serve. I promise you, he's going to give you bonus blessings. Those special blessings we talked about last time. Those handfuls on purpose. He's just going to leave them in the field for you. Just so you can walk by and pick them up. Because you've been faithful. Because you were fully persuaded that God was going to make the way. Amen. He is faithful. He will make it happen. You want another Bible story just because I'm stretching for time? What time do we got? It's early. You guys are going to have to worship like crazy to give Sister Amy some time. I'll use whatever I can and tell I don't care. God don't care either. You want another story? Here's one that's even crazier than Abraham believing for 20 years as an 80-year-old man that he's going to have a son. In the 32nd chapter of Jeremiah, 
Judah is under siege by the Babylonians. Jeremiah is in prison in the king's palace. Get this, how bad this is. He's not in prison in Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon's palace. He's been imprisoned in Judah by the king of Judah, Zedekiah. Because Jeremiah did what God told him to do because Jeremiah was a prophet of the Lord because Jeremiah was fully persuaded. Jeremiah told Zedekiah, the Babylonians are coming. The Chaldeans are going to burn this place to the ground and they're taking all of you with them, including you, King. And the king didn't like it and the king didn't want the people to hear that. And the king of Judah, of Zedekiah, put him in prison in his palace. While he's in prison, God says, I want you to buy the field of Anathoth. And that is how you say it. I practiced that one. Anathoth. I want you to buy the field of Anathoth. And everybody around him had to think, for what? Jeremiah, have you lost your marbles? Are you out of your mind? Why would you buy a field that's being overrun by the Babylonians all the property's being destroyed. Everything's being burned to the ground. And while you're sitting in prison, this is what you're thinking about? You're thinking about buying a worthless field in Anathoth. But Jeremiah had a promise. God spoke to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was fully persuaded that the promises that God had made him were going to come to pass. Yes, it was dark. Yes, it was bleak. Yes, Jeremiah was in prison. Yes, Judah was being burned to the ground by the enemy. You know why they were being burned to the ground and overtaken again? Because they didn't listen to God. This was, this was Judah's problem. This was Israel's problem. They constantly forsook the Lord. He talked, he spoke, he gave them rules, he told them what to do, and they purposely said, I don't think so, God. And every, be careful. Be very careful. God starts talking to you. You better start listening. And believe me, believe me on this one, I'm talking about what I know, not what I think here. You don't listen to God when he tells you to do something, and you don't do it when he tells you to do it, and exactly how he tells you to do it, you do not want to be on that side of God any longer. Believe me. I have been there. I have sat on a church pew when God said, get up and move now. Do this. And I sat there and said, there ain't no way. I'm getting up in the middle of this service right now and going over to that person and praying for them right now. All right. And God will punish you for that. Right. Believe yep. me. And you don't want no part of it. You want to know what broke me of that? Not the punishment that I got out of it, but the punishment that someone else was going to get out of it. Because you know what God said to me after I walked out of that church service? He said, you'll go back tonight and you'll pray. You'll pray or they'll suffer. Not you. They will suffer. He said, you will pray for them the minute you walk into the building or they will suffer. You don't want that. You want to talk about something that will break you, that will put you on your knees, that will leave you in tears for hours upon hours? Be the one who's disobedient to God and someone else has to suffer because of your disobedience. It is a very, very dangerous thing to be disobedient to the Lord. They were disobedient to the Lord. And because of their disobedience, they were being taken captive yet again by the Babylonians. This captivity lasted for 70 years. They were in, they were in Babylon, prisoners, slaves, and servants to the Babylonians for 70 years. Jeremiah had a promise for 70 years, Jeremiah remained faithful because guess what? While Jeremiah was in prison, God sent another one of those crooked cousins. <laughs> Showed up, and guess what this guy wanted to do? He wanted to sell Jeremiah the field of Anathoth that he owned. 
And Jeremiah said, now I know. Now I know God's working. Yeah. Now I know God's talking. Listen to this. I don't care what your situation is. This is really good. Get this. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how long it's been. I don't care how down you are, how dark it seems. Jeremiah was in prison, and God still showed up and gave him provision to buy that field in Anathoth. He gave him the means to fulfill the promise that he had given him. He was in prison. Where did Jeremiah get the 17 shekels of silver? He was in prison. And the people laughed. You're a fool, Jeremiah. You're crazy. You're paying 17 shekels of silver for a burned down, worthless field. The Babylonians are taking everybody back to Babylon captive. We're their slaves now, Jeremiah. Two things always cross my mind. What did his cousin do with the 17 shekels of silver anyway? He was just getting ready to go be a prisoner in Babylon. And the other thing was... What was so special about that field in Anahoth? That God wanted Jeremiah to buy that thing so bad. Why did God tell him that's the field? Hey, that's your field of dreams, Jeremiah. I got plans for you. I got plans for the field, Jeremiah. If you buy that field right now, Jeremiah, I'm going to prosper in Jeremiah. I will bless you if you are fully persuaded. Because guess what? A few chapters later in the 37th chapter of Jeremiah... What does he tell me? He said, I'm bringing my people out of captivity, Jeremiah. I'm gathering them all back together. Guess where they're coming back to, Jeremiah? You and the people are coming back to that field I had you buy in Anathoth 70 years ago. I know it sat barren. I know it looks bad. I know it ain't pretty right now, Jeremiah. But my blessings are upon it, Jeremiah. My people will be there. I will be their God. They will be my people. I'll give them one heart. I'll give them one way. They're never going to do this again, Jeremiah. Because Jeremiah was fully persuaded. He bought that field. That worthless field. And in a and God blessed that field. It, listen, once again, don't be telling Brother Cluster how you can't do it, how you can't wait, how it's been too long, how you're down and depressed because God hasn't done it yet. Come on. Abraham waited 20 years for a son. Jeremiah was in captivity in Babylon for 70 years before the promise came to pass. Listen, it's personal. There's people in here. My mom's one of them. My mom prayed for years. I know she did. I honored my mother for that. My mom not only took care of me as a child in my flesh, but my mom sent out prayers. Yeah. I know my mom prayed prayers for years and years and years and years. 36 of them to be exact. She prayed for her son. I know she was praying for God to deal with my heart, for God to deal with me. I know there had to be sleepless nights where she didn't know where Cluster was, where she knew Cluster's bad habits, where she knew Cluster was at the bar, where she knew things weren't going to be good if she didn't pray. But she prayed, and she prayed, and because she was fully persuaded that God was going to hear her prayers, that God was going to answer them, I'm here today, and I don't mean just as a preacher. I shouldn't be here today. My life should have been stuffed out from under me so many times it's not even funny. But because of the prayers of a faithful mother that I believe God answered time and time again, I'm here today. And I know there's some of you out there too. I know you've prayed for things and I know God's delivered. And I know you're living in the blessings and the provisions of God because of it. And maybe this message about staying faithful or remaining hopeless and being fully persuaded isn't what you need to hear right now. Please, just tuck it away in the memory bank. Put it in the filing cabinet somewhere way back there in the back of your mind. Because I promise you, the devil's not going to quit. He's going to attack again. It may be a season of prosperity right now, but he won't stop. He'll never quit. He's coming back.